Howdy folks, Tex Scrabner here with Tex Scrabner Outdoors. Today we're going to be talking about the 243, some of its applications, and its zeroing procedure, at least according to me. I'm not a ballistic expert, but in my experience this has worked. Historically speaking, while when people think of deer rifle, they think of a lever action 30-30 or they think of a bolt action 30-06. There are other deer hunting calibers out there. Namely, on the light end of the spectrum, at least on the east side of the Mississippi, you have the 243 Winchester. It's a great caliber for coyote. It's also a great caliber for whitetail, if you happen to have a rifle season. Now I own this particular rifle. It is a Stevens Model 200 in 243, and I got it years ago, long before I had aspirations of ever hunting coyote with a bow and arrow, because I wanted a rifle that I could hunt coyotes for their pelts to sell for money while I was in college, and I also wanted a rifle that I could take down to Missouri deer hunting because they have a rifle season which we do not in Illinois. Now historically speaking when you think of deer rifle you think of 3030 Winchester which is a close in fast handling brush rifle or you think of 30-06 but if you look in your grandfather's gun saves, I bet you will find a 243 somewhere in there. Simply because it's a very versatile caliber that if you wanted to shoot more than 150 yards out to maybe 300 or 400 on whitetail, and you didn't want to have the recoil or the meat destruction of a 270 and you wanted to have a one rifle eastern Mississippian area to where you could hunt your coyotes and hunt your whitetails then you owned a 243 that's just the way that it worked now on the other side of the Mississippi the 30-06, the 300 Winchester Magnum, and the 270 were very popular for whitetail, mule deer, and pronghorn, and of course the 7mm Remington Magnum. But the point of this video is to talk about the 243 Winchester and its practical applications as far as zeroing. This is my 100 yard group. Now as you can see, first shot, second shot, and then I shot a group right here. The reason that this group is here above the bullseye is with the trajectory of a 243, I'm able to zero with maximum precision off my bench there at a hundred yards and this gives me a 200 yard zero being roughly two and a half inches above the bullseye so it keeps me point blank all the way out to 300 maybe 400 yards depending on the bullet weight I only use a hundred grain Remington's or Super X I don't really get into the ballistic tip ammunition but a 243 is a great time-tested whitetail and predator hunting caliber that has minimal recoil and minimal meat destruction. So if you actually take it out and zero at a hundred yards two to two and a half inches above the bullseye that will keep you in an ethical kill zone out to a greater distance. Rifle that can be obtained for under $300 generally speaking before you put glass on it. You show me a Mosin Nagant that will shoot like that. 
I'm pretty exclusively a bow hunter at this point, and I don't really foresee myself going down whitetail hunting in Missouri. But the 243 is an old school, non gimmicky caliber that now, if you follow my advice, you will have your deer rifle or your coyote rifle zeroed for ethical hunting practices. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. As always, God bless all my sportsmen of America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please check out my friends over at LegallyConcealed.org. Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement and those of you serving in the military. Thanks for watching. Text, grab your outdoors.